we were told that Eric had the disease too. We knew that we might not be able to have children the traditional way. I felt pretty sick during all the treatments. What they told me was that I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. These four people have different stories to tell, but they all have something in common. Each has a very personal interest in the debate on stem cell research. Eric, Nathan, and Jason are among the thousands who have experienced the life-saving power of adult stem cell research firsthand. But what are adult stem cells? How are they different from embryonic cells? And why do so many people not know about their success in treating 69 diseases and counting? Kate has a different but related story to tell. It's a story of hope and fulfilled promises. She and her husband will introduce you to their extraordinary daughter, Zara. What can they teach us about embryonic stem cell research? And how can their story offer hope to millions of couples who, like Kate and Steve, face a future without children? Let's find out. Grab your nine, Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> Eric received his cord blood transplant 13 years mm -hmm. ago, and he was two and a half at the time. He's 14 now, and you wouldn't know it, when you meet Eric and talk to him, and he's just another 14-year-old. Not quite. <laughs> we found out about Crab A disease in our family when Eric's younger brother, Adam, started losing milestones when he was about 10 months old, and they did a lot of tests and eventually they found out that he had crab A disease. We were told there was nothing we could do. He was too far along. We could keep him comfortable and enjoy this, these last, this last year and a half of his life. Then the neurologist said, Eric almost certainly doesn't have crab A disease, but we should get him tested anyway. You're pretty good today, but you gotta remember, don't go like this. We knew we were gonna lose one child, but we thought we'd have, have the other one, and then we were told that Eric had the disease too. We thought we we're going to lose both our kids. When we first started looking at a treatment for Eric, the only thing that had been done for Crab A's disease was a bone marrow transplant. They were looking for a bone marrow match, and they weren't finding a good one. But there was new work that was being done with adult stem cells. So they started doing a search for cord blood, which are the cells that are left after a healthy birth from the placenta after the chemo and the radiation that destroyed our son's bone marrow, then it's just an IV and the cord blood drifts into the blood system and it somehow knows where to go and finds its way into the bones and starts new blood. If Eric didn't have an option to receive cord blood, the likelihood is that he would have had major complications in his bone marrow transplant, which could have taken his life or he could have been severely impaired coming out of that transplant. Eric Haynes is alive today because of stem cell research. The stem cell controversy continues. But it's to not the stem cell research that you that hear the most about. I think it's become a, a political battle that ignores more effective research that's being done in other areas with mature or adult stem cells. People do confuse the cord blood, the stem cells, with the, with the embryonic cells. So, you know, you have a very controversial product and a very non-controversial product. What many people are unaware of is that there are two sources of stem cells, embryonic, which are found in early stage embryos, and adult, found in adult tissue. Both stem cells play an important role in human development. Embryonic cells grow or differentiate into every cell tissue and organ in the body. Adult stem cells found in many places in the body, like bone marrow, blood, fat tissue, the nose, ear, teeth, and hair, have the same characteristic but function as the body's repair kit, repairing damaged cells and creating new ones. 
scientists have begun to see adult stem cells do something many thought only embryonic stem cells had the potential to do. They can develop into different types of cells in the body. For example, adult stem cells from the nose can be injected into other parts of the body and develop into heart, kidney, muscle, brain, and nerve cells. And unlike embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells are easy to find and extract without harm to the donor. It is a surgery that has saved the lives of many and improved the daily lives of people like Jason Fiesel. It was a summer. I was coming back from a softball game and I was about three blocks from my house. A lady pulled out in front of me. I was on a motorcycle and I hit her. What they told me was that I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. I'll be in a wheelchair and I probably will never walk again. I'm bullheaded and I won't never really take no for an answer, so that's pretty much what happened. I, I didn't take no for an answer. Me, my mom, my sister, my dad, my family went up there to Detroit and met with Dr. Hinder. He then told us about procedures that people were doing. Then I got to talk to some people that went and had the surgery and, and that's what decided, you know, made, me, made my mind up to go out of the surgery. I figured, yeah, why not do this? Let's try it and see what it's going to do. After the procedure, after the surgery, I came back, um, and I and I could and I could start to crawl. If I've got the trunk control back, it's starting to get some of my abdominals back and stuff like that. When you don't have, you know, a stomach muscles or anything to contract, when you sit, you just fold over. If, if you don't, I mean, you don't have the muscles to control your body. It's not just the physical things too, as far as movement and everything. I'm able to sneeze a lot better, cough a lot better, my diaphragm, my breathing's got a lot better. You know, it's so hard to tell you I'm feeling tingling and burning because you're like, what's tingling and burning? But to me, you know, feeling different things in my body, like when I transfer or go onto like a hard surface or something, I can tell it's a hard surface now. It's also giving people a lot more hope that, you know, there is things going on in this world right now um, to uh, cure paralysis. Stop. Just relax now. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me where I'm touching? Yeah, you're on the left leg. <laughs> right. No? No, you're on the right. It feels like on the top. Fiesel's doctor, oh, Carlos yeah. Lima, has been studying the regenerative powers of adult stem cells for more than 20 years. Nature made the adult stem cells for replacing and to repair. And what we want is that to replace and repair. His surgery transplants adult stem cells from the patient's own nasal cavity to their damaged spinal cord. Lima has done this surgery more than 70 times and all of the patients have shown improvements ranging from a recovery of feeling, better control of breathing and stomach muscles, better control of bodily functions, and some like we saw with Jason Fiesel have even achieved the ability to walk with braces. Fiesel's surgery is an emerging technology still very experimental. Nathan Sally's story is different. Doctors have built a longer track record with his illness. When I was 11, I was diagnosed with AML leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia. And obviously, I, I felt pretty sick during all the treatments, the chemo and the radiation. Very sick in the hospital. For, you know, months sometimes. He battles a much bigger foe than his opponents on the soccer field, a 13-year-old boy with leukemia who needs your help. His I couldn't go to school. I had to homeschool the end of sixth grade, seventh grade, um, the end of eighth grade, and this ninth grade. I never wanted to be thought of as the sick kid or the kid that can't do that, and that's kind of what kept me going. I'd been pushing his doctor to do a complete blood count on him. I said, something's not right. And they said, just relax. He's doing fine. This is normal for you to have these feelings. And I said, no, 
there's something wrong. And so they did go ahead and do the CBC and found that he had blasts in his um, counts. And that meant that he had leukemia cells forming again. They said really the only treatment that could save his life would be a bone marrow transplant. And so we said, OK, met with the doctors. And they also introduced the notion of a cord blood transplant. They went ahead with the cord blood because they said that I had a greater likelihood of not rejecting it. And that although it was a newer treatment, um, I believe I was the sixth patient that year in 99 to receive a cord blood um, stem cell transplant. So I knew that it was something new and something big that was being shown to work um, in other patients like myself. I had been in the hospital for you know, almost three weeks um, after I had uh, the cells infused, the transplant, and they were waiting for my um, blood counts to rise, a spike in my blood counts, some, some sign that the cells are taking and working. And I know that my parents were desperately wake, uh, waiting for that moment, and once it came, I, I could tell a sign of relief on doctors' faces and everyone's faces. I knew at this point, this is something good and it will work. I mean, I'm healthy now. I go to college at CSU. Yeah get to hang out with my friends and, and study. It gives me just a new outlook on everything that I do. Five bucks if I make the shot, Sean? Nope. Yeah! <laughs> he has a great sense of humor. He plays soccer. Oh, just the normal stuff that guys his age do. The advances in medical research have made possible his life, really. I'm just thankful that he didn't get leukemia 25 years ago. Unlike Nathan Sally, Kate and Steve Johnson did not have a life-threatening illness. They simply wanted to have children. While the medical technology that helped them is not the result of adult stem cell surgery, their story offers a life-affirming alternative for embryos stored at IVF clinics. I can just remember being in the hospital and just absolutely falling in love with this little girl. The first second I saw her, just, you know, having my heart just completely captured. Zara is a very interactive little girl. She plays with her kitchen and she cooks feasts for us every day. There you go. Okay. Of course, Steve was paralyzed and that's, that was the situation that we came into as a couple and we knew that we might not be able to have children the traditional way. Home run, Zara Johnson! High five! Woo! We're listening to the radio, getting ready for work one morning. And they had a, a couple on that had just had a baby okay. through adopting an embryo. Uh, but we got some information on the Snowflake program and, and decided to go forward with it. To experience a pregnancy and to know that Zara was frozen for two years before she became, you know, a living, breathing baby here on this side of my body. Um, just indwells that even more inside me to know that to use an embryo for research is always and forever killing a human being. Zara and I are in a unique position that of all the snowflakes in the in the world she's the only one that has a daddy who is paralyzed and in a wheelchair. Would I kill my daughter in order that I could have a cure of course not. But yet, why do we think it's okay to kill someone else's daughter or someone else's son just because they haven't been born yet? And that's, that's the issue. There have been no cures through embryonic stem cell research. Not one person has benefited in 25 years of that research. But with adult stem cell research, there have been nearly 70 diseases, disorders, injuries that have people have gotten cures from and it's thousands of people who have benefited from that from that science
One of the arguments that people make is that, well, there's so many of these embryos anyway, they're just going to be destroyed. What I've seen them do, you know, they hold up the pad of paper and they, they have a dot, you know, they put a dot with a pen on a piece of paper. And they say, all we're talking about is just this little dot. Well, that's right. And guess what? Every one of us was that little dot at one point in time. We were all embryos at one point in time. Just because something is small doesn't make it insignificant. A face and a body and a voice doesn't lie. Wait, come down. Help us get ready for the ball. Sitters, stepsisters. My daughter is a, a witness and a testimony to the fact that she was alive when she was an embryo as much as she is alive today. Kate and Steve's daughter, Zara, is one of the 101 babies born as a result of embryo adoption. Part of the frustration is, is the lack of um, knowledge, public knowledge, on embryo adoption. And so, you know, there's a much better place for these embryos, and that is, uh, you know, as, as children, for the people who desperately want children. Because Johnson is paralyzed, he has been asked, don't you want embryonic research to take place because you may benefit? If I'm going to be able to walk one day, it's going to be because of, the, because of adult stem cell research and not embryonic stem cell research. It is going to be, uh, you know, that's where my cure is going to come from. And, and so when, when time and money and, you know, scientists' time and, you know, just media attention when all that is drawn to embryonic stem cell research, that means that's, that's another day or week or month or year that I'm in this wheelchair. Four families, four different situations, all connected by stem cell research, all interested in cures. Three experience life-saving treatments with adult stem cells. They are just a few of the thousands doctors have successfully treated with adult stem cells for 69 diseases and injuries. These diseases include the deadliest we face, stroke, heart disease, cancer, Parkinson's, brain tumors, and sickle cell anemia. And even more success stories are likely to come. The National Institutes of Health website shows more than 500 clinical studies underway. More and more uh, scientists are um, believing that uh, adult stem cells are much more uh, uh, effective than embryonic um, or fetal stem cells. Embryonic hasn't been proven to work. And even if you don't have to worry about the moral and the ethical and even the political dilemmas, you can just focus on completely what works. Adult stem cells on this side are working. Here's an example, you know, seven years after treatment. And that's what I would like people to know. Eric Haynes, Jason Fiesel, and Nathan Sally are living examples of the progress made when adult stem cells transform into other cells in the human body. And they are just a few of many. Adult stem cell research has shown tremendous ability to improve the health of those afflicted with life-threatening illnesses. And as Steve and Kate Johnson and their daughter Zara will attest, adult stem cell research offers a lot more benefit than embryonic stem cell research. Embryonic stem cell research destroys embryos. Adult stem cell research is saving lives.